So, hey, you guys, we're back together, and today we're not talking about the healthy food, you know. But we will eat it. Of course. Uh, today we have some more, like, private, some more, like, into-depth topic. We're talking relationships, and we're actually starting on a sad point. We decided to start with how to survive through a breakup, how to live it through, and we wanted to share our experience, and maybe it'll help you, maybe some, like, psychological help for you here. So, yeah, let's start. And, yeah, we're gonna eat. We're sorry for that, <laughs> by the way. But you can just eat as well. Yeah, sure. And Go ahead. Really, I think that this topic about how to get over the breaking up is also connected about health because really I do not know any person who has loved someone, then they breaking up and this person or even two of them just felt themselves. Yeah, yeah, no one feels good after a breakup, even if the relationship was not that important, even if you break up with someone you were dating for a week and you were not <laughs> really invested in there, but you still feel there's some like weird feeling inside of you. It's yes, like, why, why someone, not everyone? Like, why me? Why, to, why once more someone just breaking up with yeah. me? I had a few times when I broke up with a guy, like I felt um, I don't have feelings for that guy. I was like, I don't need this anymore, he annoys me, he annoys the out of me, like, seriously, and then I call that guy, or, like, I meet up with that guy, I break up with him, and I go home and end up crying, like, I was the victim of breakup, you know, <laughs> not him, I was like, why do I have to do this, this is all his fault, and everything, yeah, that is, like, and also, actually, about food, um, a lot of a lot of us are like emotional eaters, you know. What well, uh -huh. that happens? Like I, I am too. For it's like for some part of it, it's not like I eat a whole pizza when I have a breakup. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, it's just you need something to feel better, and yes. food is usually that th something. And always when you're just feeling bad, you don't think about okay, I'm healthy eating, so I will take some fruit. No. You just want pizza, cake, chips, chocolates. And ice cream. And ice cream. And you're just forgetting about anything because you really feel that this food, this stuff will just help you. But nobody is help, no, nothing is helping like this. It's like you feel sad, you eat, and then you look at yourself uh, and like your skin gets worse. Maybe you'll gain some weight and you're like, that is even sadder. Yes, so why did I do that to myself? Starting to drink as well. Oh yeah, well. that's a huge issue. Like seriously, if it's a serious, serious breakup, you'll even like go in depth of like drinking and maybe some people smoke weed and do stuff and then go to drugs and that's just a sad side of it. And just drinking too much is sad in general. Alcohol doesn't do any good for you. I'll just start chopping some fruits for the salad, if you don't mind. I Sorry will, for my back view, but, you know. I will just try not to spill all the juice from the glass. Oh, okay. Because it always should be really careful. Oh, my God. I'm so weak. Or there is something strange with this. Oh. Uh, okay. Maybe but use I, the knife? Yes. Like, there's the knife? But it is dirty with your cheese. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> I hate this cheese. Why? Because, I don't know, it smells for me, you know, like uh, the class when you just change your clothes before uh, sports. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and like especially dirty not the like, one for girls, but the one for girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Really? I have such a with that and especially when I'm just you know going for some movie premieres and when they are just like something like Fifty Shades of Grey so something about luxury oh yeah they are always uh, just giving us some some of this cheese and some uh, you know dry wine oh yeah and it is something that I hate even more about Fifty Shades of Grey oh yeah <laughs> And, you know, 
Um, and especially about something that you said when you cannot have any feelings with some person, but you are just crying. My last breaking out was with a boy, with a guy, and um, we were dating for three years. Oh, yeah, that's and, a long time. Yes, and the last year I just understood that um, I do not love him, and I'm just losing my feelings to him every day. Oh. And uh, so it wasn't, you know, something really surprising that he decided to break up with me. And it was so much painful. But I you know that um, guys are always telling me that I never break up with some, someone, even if I understand that I do not need this relationship just because it is helping me to work. Oh. You know, like having a relationship, just something that helps you to to work every day, to have this energy, to have this motivation, inspiration. Oh yeah, I understand. It's like uh, it's like having someone for you. You know that you have someone there for you. You have you yes. know that you're meeting a person after work and before work maybe, and you know it just yeah, it just helps. It's just a support thing, and maybe, I don't know, you feel like you have... Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You feel like you have a reason to try harder, like you have someone to try harder for. But, yeah. But I didn't consider this as a good point, because, you know, it is something when you don't just have a person who understands your passion for working and who tries to motivate you or something like this, but it is about when you do not love someone, you do not feel interested in relationships, but right. you are still acting like a girl in love or a boy in love. I also have some boys like that. I know them. And just because you are using a person. Or uh, what also happens, you're not using, but you're used to a person. It's, uh, it's the comfort zone. You know, uh, it's like a lot of people, even like a lot of people I know, are afraid to break up with someone because they're used to it. Like they're comfortable in that relationship. And if they, even though they don't have any feelings, it's still like if you break up, you need to move on. You need to like find something new, find someone new. And it's like that's seriously out of the comfort zone. Like you yes. need to do something for it. And people are just lazy sometimes, you know. Yes, I understand this. Oh, finally! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's God. a little victory here. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, we were talking about, like, how to manage it. Like, how to take breakups more, like, I don't know, easily or something. So, anyways, uh, what I do... I usually let myself cry for like at least mm -hmm. some amount of time. Not Wait, like. What was the longest amount of time? I would say like three days. Really? Yeah. I had more. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I am. I am a person that is like really quick to move on. Even for some things, I would still feel sad. Like up to this day, mm -hmm. for some situations, but I am. Um, like, it's easy for me to switch, to, like, move on on something, to find something interesting in life, and to just block those thought, thoughts, like, out of my head. So, yeah, three days was the top, and it was I was really emotionally invested in that. It was not a long relationship, but it was, it was really emotional and everything, so I just... And that guy, um, he actually, he cheated on me. Mm -hmm. But not with just, you know, just a regular cheating situation. He cheated on me with, like, seven or eight girls. And I got to know that because one of those girls was my one of my close friends. And I got to know it from her. She called me crying and telling me that happened. And then I called him and I was like, is this for real? And he was like, yeah. And she was not the only one. What's the problem? I told you I'm not the best guy ever. I'm like, uh, but it is your friend. But how what friend the... just managed to? Yeah, and 
Yeah, and again, I that was not only a problem with that boyfriend, it was a problem that that friend did that and uh she was all like sorry, apologetic and she was crying and she was felt drunk. no, she felt she just felt guilty because you know she was my close friend. No, 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 she was drunk or she was doing that. Uh, I'm not sure about the backstory of that. I was um, I was in another city at that point. I had to go there for like a week. Mm-hmm. So I was not here. And that happened while I was on that trip. So, you know, I don't know the circumstances that much. And we didn't talk. To, I didn't talk to like either of them since that. Oh, ever. that's great because... I was afraid that you will say just right now that okay, and she's still my close friend. No. Uh, um, I had really the first thing that I just realized that you need to do after breaking up because I was breaking up. No, my boyfriends were breaking up with me, and really, it's not just because I'm, I'm so bad. No. I'm just um, not really strong in this one, so sometimes I just did everything so that my boyfriend has decided to leave me. So, yeah. you know, I didn't want to be that person that that is doing this, saying that I do not want to be with you anymore. Oh, yeah. So I just sometimes I just did some bad things, just, you know, annoying, abusing, and so on and so on, just to make the person do something. And really... All the breaking ups were just for me very hard. Once I just got in very long depression for three months. Oh my god. Yes, I was just lying in the bed and doing nothing. So that after my last breaking up, I just remember the thing that it was not really bad breaking up in the point of, you know, he just um, decided to meet me. He was just ill for a long time. And then thought, okay, we will go for a walk and everything will be good because, you know, it is the time when you're used to, to be with this person, yes, and you are still trying to to save this relationship. Oh, yeah. That. So she, uh, he, we were just walking and he just said that he can't stand it anymore. Oh. And he just went to break up. And I was crying a bit, but I said, that's okay, that's okay. I said that I'm just emotional, so that I'm crying. But... Um, and I just asked him, maybe we can, you know, um, say good, not friends, but people who could just communicate sometime. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, to say hello on the streets because we are living quite close to each other. Oh, yeah. And he said yes. And really, after he just uh, left me, immediately I just called my best friend and I called Guy, no. not a girl. I really, I just understood that no girl could help. I just called the guy and I said, hello, my boyfriend just has just broken up with me and I do not want to stay this uh, evening alone. Oh. I just understood that the most important thing is just to find someone who is funny enough, you know, energetic enough just to... To be um, there for me. Yes, for this first evening or first day of breaking up, this is really, really important. And really, I was crying just, oh, thank you, <laughs> just for maybe five min- minutes in total huh. that evening. Just because uh, that was, this is not really good thing. Oh. That was mine is fine, I think. the greatest friend of mine. So, he, you know, like a com- comedian. Oh, yeah. And it was like a, you know, uh, the evening long personal stand up. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's so great. So the first advice just just try to find someone for these first days maybe. Yeah, that is really important to find a friend to support you. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and I totally understand your point. I am uh, actually lucky enough to have a lot of friends who are guys. Like, I actually have a lot more guy friends than girlfriends. So. Um, yeah, and they help a lot, like they understand better and they're not just sitting there crying with you, but they're actually making it better and funnier yes. for you. So yeah, that's that's a great advice. You know what actually was my 
worst breakup it was not the saddest one like that i just told you the cheating was not the worst one really yeah uh, but there were seven girls yeah it but it's not the worst case like it's uh just you know it was the saddest one but not the worst because the worst was actually like it was i think two or three a few years ago uh i was dating this guy I was in Korea. Um, I was dating this guy. It was not Korean? Yeah, Korean guy. Uh, it was not for a long time. And, well, he was really, like, his English was fluent. And we actually communicated really well. He was interesting to talk to. Um, I was, you know, I was actually, like, having a great time with him. And uh, he had a motorcycle, so that was even cooler. Like, he was a biker and everything. It was super cool. Um, and... We would just, you know, sit in coffee shops at night and drink tea and everything. It was cool. But one day, um, he decided to break up with me. I didn't know that. Like, I got a text. Like, he wasn't responding to my text for, like, I think the whole day and the whole night. And then um, I got the text from him saying that he got in an accident, like in a car accident on his motorcycle. And he's in the hospital. So this is why he didn't reply. And I was, of course, I was in shock. I was like, are you okay? What happened to you? What hospital are you at? And he didn't reply again no. for like a day or so. Oh. And then I called him. I knew his best friend. So I called his best friend. I was like, where is he? Is he fine and everything? And his best friend is like, yeah, yeah, he's fine. He's going home now. Um, I was like, can I visit? Like, what? Can I help somehow? Uh, it's not only because he was my boyfriend, but, you know, the person got, got in an accident. Yeah. It's just Most humanity, you know. Accidents. Yeah, and, um, but his friend was like, no, he's not feeling well. Just, no, just maybe later. And I was, I was so much in shock. I didn't even, I didn't think it was suspicious or something. I was in shock, you know. And um, then after a few days of not replying, I, I just called him and uh, after like three calls he finally answered and he was like you know what I didn't get into any accident I just made that story up so I can break up with you so I wouldn't see you anymore I was like what even is this like um, in what world does that make you break up with someone like seriously what is this this is the worst breakup I ever had. Like, this is just ridiculous. I felt that the worst breakup that I if I just heard one day was a text message. No, not the text message. You know this uh, online game Dota? Mm. And I have a friend and he just was playing Dota. Oh, yeah. And uh, his girlfriend, she didn't understand didn't understand that while a boy is playing Dota, you sh should not to, to annoy him or something like yeah, this. Yeah, well, any uh, game. And any, just any... anything you're doing. If you're something doing mm -hmm. something, just try not to. And she was calling and calling, calling and calling him. They were dating for five years. No. Oh. And she, he, she was calling, calling, and then he just answered and said, I'm breaking up with you. Goodbye. Oh yeah, and that's sad. really he have he hasn't uh, communicated with her after that. So you know, I thought that this is th that was the most strange breaking up that I have heard. But no, yours is the most strange. Yeah, I yeah that's that's the other like that's the whole other topic. It's like my actual like tryouts of relationships with Korean guys is the other topic. They are so much different from what we're used to. So it's what just, is wrong with them? Um it's uh, it's like it's just they're different and they are they, it's hard to actually make it a interrelationship if you're a foreigner if you're a foreigner foreigner if you're not Asian. Mm-hmm um and it's like a lot of them just want to have sex with you know white girls because it's considered cool you know like riding a white horse <laughs> you know that stuff like for white guys to have sex with a black girl yeah basically like that 
So, yeah, and a lot of them would pretend they're all, like, nice and romantic till they got to bed with you, and then it's over. But with that guy, with the the accident guy, uh, we did, nothing even happened ever. Like, we didn't even get to that point. <laughs> I was like, what, what is this? So, yeah, I had another guy I was dating there. It was only, like, two guys, actually, in, like, two years. And both of them were, like, one relationship was, like, two weeks, and the other was, like, a week. Mm. It didn't last any longer than that. And then that, that other guy, he was a DJ in a club. And he had a really, like... I don't know. He thought he was a celebrity already. He was a freaking DJ in this smallest club ever. Like, but all the prostitutes near this club just uh, just knew him, so he decided he, he thought he was a celebrity. Mm-hmm. So he didn't allow me to like even come close to him when we were in the club, because he's a celebrity. He cannot have a girlfriend. And I just, I couldn't do that, you know? I was like, we, and I texted him, and I was like, we have a problem. We need to talk about this, you know? Like, this is a problem. And right after he got this message, he didn't reply to me ever again. He just disappeared. And that what actually is wrong, like, at least for me, with uh, the all the Korean guys I've met. I'm sorry if you're not like that. Like, this is my experience anyways. So uh, they don't deal with the problems well. Like, they avoid any problems, any discussions. They, so it's they, like we were just arguing, so it's just the end of our relationship? Yeah, they they don't want to talk about problems. Like, And at least for me, every, like normal like functional brain functional adult person can build a relationship not only a romantic relationship but like any relationship with any other normal adult person in terms of talking like if you talk to someone you can figure everything out Mm -hmm. so yeah i think that's really random like you need to talk if you want to be with someone of course you're gonna have some issues because everybody is different yes and you need to talk them through i just reminded a very funny story it was just not about my life but about the some guys i know really that was the, the strangest guy i just have ever met so there is a guy there is a girl um the girl you know Every girl you meet, if you're a girl, you're feeling something not, you know, you cannot just um, um, communicate with girl really, really close when you meet her for the first time, because she could be more beautiful than you, or more funny, or more clever, or more interest, and so on, and so on. But that girl, she was perfect. Really, I just met her, and I just was looking at her and thinking, oh my god, she is funny, not annoying, not stupid, just perfect. And uh, she had a boyfriend, one of the guys I just uh, know as well, and they were dating for half of a year. Mm. And then uh, he, he's a musician and he's um, usually traveling to some other countries for the contracts. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and he, uh, before... Um, one month before he had to go to another country, he just stopped communicating with her. So sometimes he was writing her in Facebook or something like this, and you know, it was like commenting a photo, likes, some some strange things, or I don't know, sending um, some video, just like that. And when he just uh, gone to another country, so they haven't they haven't met for half of a year. Oh, yeah. So a month before he had to leave and half of a year in another country. And of course, she found for herself another guy. And in maybe in eight months after they breaking up, mm-hmm. she just posted a picture with a new guy. 
and that that her ex-boyfriend just wrote to her and said, Hey, you're a whore, what are you doing? And she just said, what? And he said, uh, you're my girlfriend, who's this, who's this jerk? And she said, you're not my boyfriend anymore. And attention, he said, but I hasn't said that we're breaking up. So he wasn't communicating with the girl for eight months. And then he just wrote to her that she's a whore just because there was not no phrase about breaking up. Yeah, that's like one supersized feel of self-importance in that guy. You know, he thinks he's the star there, but he's not. Like, why do? You, why would he even do that? Like, if you're in a relationship, you're supposed to talk to each other. That's the basics. <laughs> I don't know, but this I was random. just laughing <laughs> to his terror some things because I was just, I, you know, I know this guy. I was uh, studying with him at school. Oh, yeah. So it's some thing when you just you know the guy, you have been drinking coffee with him sometimes, and <laughs> he's uh, saying something like this. Yeah, that's just, I, I don't know, it's just strange and everything. And that's the worst one. People decide to break up with you by just ignoring you. Because you don't understand what's going on. It's like for up to like months, there's just nothing going on. They, they're not talking to you. So you don't even know if they want to break up with what's happening. Yes, and you even cannot really come to this person and say that what is going on because you do not really know. Are you a girlfriend or a boyfriend of this person still or not? <laughs> Can you just this have this right to say something you are not really happy about? It's just yeah. I mean it's and it's it's really childish, in my opinion. I don't know. I was I have started dating when I was twelve years old with a guy who was thirteen years old, and really he was much more elder than anyone in his mind mm. because he just started dating with me not just with you know I just want to meet you in in the cinema sometimes and something like this I just want to you know to hold your hand no he just came to me and he said I love you from the first sight from the first class I just yes. saw you and now you we are just teenagers so I hope that you will say yes and you will be my girlfriend. So, and when we were breaking up, it was really, really hard, really sad because first love, yeah, guy yeah. was just loving me from the first grade to yeah. the for ten years. Oh yeah. And um, but he just said everything, you know. It was hard for him. I remember he was crying because he still loved me. But he understood that he, he cannot stand it anymore. I was from, you know, this family of um, some reputation. So I was an uh, excellent student. Oh, yeah. I didn't smoke or take alcohol. And I was really too much um, into rules. And my boyfriend should be also like a good one. But he was punk guy. Oh, yeah. And he entered the um, film directing class in college. Yeah. And and he just said that I cannot be with you anymore. Oh, yeah. So, and it was really the best thing that he had done for me. So, I'm just watching after my friend right now, my, like a best friend, and she has broken up with her guy eight months ago, and he's still writing to her. Oh. He, so he has broken up with her, mm-hmm. but he's still writing, he's liking her photos on Instagram, watching all her stories, uh, I don't know, trying to meet her someday. No, my first love just made the best thing. When he was breaking up with me, he just said the worst words I have ever heard about myself. He just cut every everything between us. Oh yeah. He just burned all the bridges, and he just in just in a one year and a half, 
he said to me that he still loved me, but he did that just because he understood that only in this way I could get over it. Just, mm -hmm. you know, he even blocked me in social networks just to make me um, do not know anything about him. Just not to see his new girlfriend, new life, and so on and so on. And I was sitting and thinking, oh my God, I thought that you are a jerk. So the 15 years, years old guy just made something that no guy from my nowadays world could do. Just made something that really harmed him, but he understood that he is doing better for me. That is so like... <laughs> That is so serious and so like romantic. I don't know. It's just yeah. But I mean, now he's, he's, he's a drug addicted. So no. <laughs> oh yeah. And I'm actually uh, talking about long term relationship. I had few of those, and with those guys, not the one, the random ones, but you know, those guys. I'm actually like on good terms now. I'm still friends with them. And, you know, we're doing the same hobby with most of them. And, like, yeah. no, well, that was serious to say most of them because there were only two of them, but, <laughs> you know, with both of them. And actually one of those two, um, he's in my really close friend circle and we're almost, like, best friends still. And it's just, you know, the relationship. Um, we were dating for three and a half years. And it, like... Somewhere, like at some point, it transformed from a relationship to really like close friendship. We didn't even have any like. It is hard to believe. Yeah. No, it is as it is. Um, it's like he has a new girlfriend now, and I have a boyfriend now, and we're all fine, like all together. We're like on good terms. We're friends, and you know, it's just the relationship. On like the year, on the third year, it was close friendship. We didn't feel any like we didn't have any feelings anymore like romantic feelings and we didn't have any passion anymore like there was no chemistry at all mm -hmm. we felt like we cared for each other we're comfortable with each other you know like best friends are but no serious romantic stuff at all and we actually we broke up really like smoothly and that was the only time I didn't cry by breaking up because I know where it was going I knew where it was going and he knew and we were like fine and we're still friends so it's you know it's not like something really bad happened um but yeah and then then I had I think three years of this random mm -hmm. shit <laughs> of like this like weird guys breaking up the weird ways and <laughs> weird relationships that didn't last more than a month and like all those kinds of stuff and I had a lot more of really unpleasant stuff I didn't want to talk to you about. But yeah, and then then I came back home and here I had some some other things too, but some random things. But then I met my boyfriend, who's my boyfriend now, and I think this is it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is it. I'm 100%. Oh, I'm sure that, that is that was it for seven times. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I was a few times as well, but yeah, this time it's like really different. And yeah, and I didn't expect that because I, I knew that guy for like years before. Really closely. I, I understand you. But yeah, uh, breaking up is hard and it's something you need to struggle through. It's always a struggle, even if it's not that much, but it's still some struggle. And you need to figure out your own way to get out of it. But what you always need to remember is that you need someone, at least someone to talk to. If it's a dog. Even if it's a dog, even if it's your pet, maybe your hamster even. If it's someone to care about. Yeah, and you need to talk it out, or if you don't have anyone at all, even like a stranger, you need to talk, you can meet a stranger and talk to a stranger about that. At least write it down, like take it out of you somehow. That helps. Maybe do something creative, like uh, place your energy into creativity, like 
play some instruments, sing, I don't know, draw, whatever you're good at or whatever you just like to do. Or maybe start jogging. Yeah, that helps. So exercise, it helps so much. Like. And you know, I have such a secret that I don't know why, but now my friend just using it, but I'm telling this to all the person. Because um, when that guy, my first love, um, we were breaking up and he said one, one very important thing. So I was just crying and saying that you said you love me for 10 years. So you said it is forever. I, you're just breaking my castles of dreams. Why, why do, do this? And he just said that, um, he just said that right now he cannot be with me. And right now, I also cannot be with him. But he said that everything that is happening in our life just have to be happened. So if him is my destiny, it, it doesn't matter now or in five years or even when we are will be 60 years old. We will just meet and we will understand that that is the real love. And I was just, you know, he just um, he just uh, walked with me to the bus stop. I sat on the bus, and really, every time it is not only connected with breaking up, but everything you are doing in your life, everything you are loving, and you are really feeling you lose it. The most important thing is never give give up, and always just keep in mind that if this person is your destiny. Okay, not today, not now, some other day, but you will be together. Yeah, I'm always, I'm also a huge believer that everything happens for a reason. And if something's yours, it's if it's supposed to be yours, it'll be yours and it'll come to you. And uh, even if it's not that guy, like if you broke up with someone and you really like you were really into that guy, you you had feelings and everything. Uh, maybe if he's if he's your destiny, he'll be with you. But if he's not, there for sure something better for you. You know, like there's always something for you. You just need to wait and try something new. Go out there and like you know search for something new for yourself. That helps. And because at one point, um, I felt like after all those weird breakups and not be and not being able to start a normal relationship and all those failures, uh, at one point of my life, like a year and a half ago, I thought I'm done. Like I thought I have nothing else left for me. I will die alone with 40 cats and no, dogs. no one and cat as well. <laughs> no one would ever love me, and you know I'm just a complete failure. But exactly when I was on the edge, like I was almost done with all of this, I met a guy. Well, I met a guy I knew for years, and he changed the whole thing for me. I like I that gave me hope in life again. So like, what my point is is, even if you think everything's bad, it's not that bad. There's something for you. There's something more, sir. <laughs> Well, that happens as well. You just just don't give up, you know. Everything happens in life. Just don't give up. So, so guys, we hope that that you will just take the tips we gave to you because we really don't want anyone to feel that pain or even that uh, even worse pain that we felt because we understand what is breaking up. We understand what is this. Everything connected with that, but the most important is just to find someone, even maybe on the internet. So one day I just thought that I have no friends because it was so, so a fun girl on the internet and she really helped me. Yeah. So anyways, uh, don't lose hope. Don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to meet new people. And that's basically it for today. So... We hope that our stories, our advices, and everything we just told you helped you. And I hope you don't think that we're weird or something. <laughs> so anyways. Those guys. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Us. not us. We're <laughs> fine. We're we're cool. Uh, anyways, see you next time, guys. Goodbye.